Okay, so I've been walking around, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but something caught my eye, and uh, it looked like chicken of the woods. But I'm not used to seeing chicken of the woods in the spring, so we're going to go over and take a look. But you tell me, what is that? Okay, it's unmistakably chicken of the woods. Hmm. I know there are two types. There's like, uh, there's sulfurous and there's cincinnatus. And I think cincinnatus is yellow on the bottom and sulfurous is white or the other way around maybe. And one of them might be a spring and the other one might be a fall mushroom. I'm not sure. But these are going to be tasty. Stick around and find out what we do with these. Well, in true Chicken of the Woods fashion, they are prolific. I mean, look at this cluster. That's my hand. Oh, they're still nice and soft, too. These are going to be really tasty. All right, so when we're identifying these Chicken of the Woods mushrooms here, First thing is the obvious, the color, right? They're very bright. You just don't see many things like that in nature that aren't flowers. It's gonna grow on a dead tree. Here we still have a little bit of bark. Uh, you can see the bark's falling off here. This is an ash tree, which is kind of where I always find them. I know it's a dead ash because you can see where the emerald ash borer girdled this tree and killed it. So with with this mushroom, you want it to be nice and soft. That's the part you want to eat. As they get older, the middle gets more and more firm and less and less palatable. However, these are young enough that darn near the whole mushroom is soft enough to eat. So we're going to go ahead and cut some of this off. I might cut a few pieces and place them on some, some other trees nearby that I know are capable of hosting this mushroom and try to spread it a little bit. But uh, we're gonna cut these up and we are going to bring them inside and cook them. I should probably mention, uh, these are like my favorite mushroom. They're just so versatile. All right, here we're gonna get our bags set on the ground and we're gonna start to go at these mushrooms. Um, the way they grow, you can tell they kind of grow in shelves but each one of those shelves is kind of connected at the base and sometimes they fuse together even kind of somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to start with these lower ones because they're a little more free and I'm basically just going to cut a notch all the way through as far back and close to the tree as I can. And then I'm going to go through and just make sure I get that cut all the way through. And so I don't get any bark. I am going to cut the edges that are touching the tree and leave those attached. And we'll kind of just pull out a little wedge here. So we're gonna work all the way around those mushrooms and pull out our shelf. There you go, pretty clean, not a lot of debris on them. This is gonna save us time later. Here's an up close of that same slice. You can see how they get the name chicken of the woods. Look at the texture on those, very chicken-like, especially after you cook them. Flavor also reminiscent of chicken. Just a beautiful mushroom. We're gonna bring everything inside and we're gonna start to prepare this food. All right, I have some yeast that's been activated and getting added to some flour. Um, I'm going to make bread here. My bread recipe is pretty simple. It's just a standard ratio of water to flour um, to yeast and usually you know a couple tablespoons of sugar or something like that as well as some salt and any other seasonings you want here. I added some spices to my bread but that's totally optional. We're gonna bring all that together until it starts to get nice and sticky and form a dough and then we'll knead that for a little while as well and we'll leave that in a warm place after it's formed to rise for anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour the longer the better so we'll place it by the oven and let it warm up and rise in the meantime we'll process our mushrooms we've got our 
mushrooms cleaned. I did some of the cleaning in the field, but also uh, brought them in and washed off any other debris that I saw still on them. And we're going to pick a piece to start with here. And we're just going to slice them into bite size, relatively thin pieces. You want to stay around a quarter inch, no more than a half inch thick pieces. This is just going to save you a lot of time when you actually cook them. So we're going to get them all sliced up here into, you know, kind of fajita style chicken pieces. You can see we've got it all sliced up and our bread now has risen sufficiently. And so we'll pull that out. You can see it's definitely about doubled in size. We're going to go ahead and cut that into pieces so that we can roll that into kind of sub-style bread. I'm gonna make one roll here for my daughter, but the rest will be sub-style bread or sandwich bread. And when you roll, you notice I kind of fold it in on itself and at the end I'm twisting it and kind of forcing it together. You want the top to kind of be shiny when you're doing this, and that's just going to ensure that you get a nice fluffy uh, interior in your bread. Here we're shaping our sub, so we want it to be long and skinny. And then we'll place all of those on our rack and let those rise for another 10 to 15 minutes at least. About after that 10 to 15 minute mark, we're gonna go ahead and cut some little uh, slits at the top of our bread. And this will just give the bread room to expand as it's cooking so you don't get these bulges and cracks and stuff in your crust. And there are fancy ways to do this. I'm doing it as simply as I possibly can. We've got our mushrooms and a hot skillet with basically no oil in there. And it's starting to sizzle, so we'll go ahead and add all of our mushrooms. And we just really want the flat sides down as much as possible, but we'll kind of just throw them all in. We're going to add some salt after we get them all in there and not too much just enough to be palatable but we're going to use that salt to help draw out the extra moisture we'll add in a little bit of our onion powder and a few other seasonings like garlic powder uh, to help season these up a little bit we want to keep the seasoning pretty simple because we are going to put a sauce on these and so it doesn't need to be too complex today. Stir all that around to make sure the season seasonings get evenly coated and we're going to add a few herbs just to the top of our bread. A little bit of basil, thyme and oregano, we'll sprinkle all of those over the bread and at the end here we will just give it a little bit of a pat or a rub in to make sure some of those are going to stick. Uh, I do put oil on the exterior of my bread when I'm kneading it out so it does have something to stick to. Our mushrooms are really starting to lose some moisture here. You can tell though that they're still pretty soft and that's fine. Uh, I prefer a more meaty texture when I cook these so I, by most people's standards, would probably overcook them. Our bread's coming out here, nice golden brown on the top. And here's our finished chicken. You can see that it pulls apart a lot like chicken. We're gonna throw all that chicken in the woods inside of a bowl. And then we are going to go ahead and add some pesto. This is just a store-bought pesto. You can make your own. My basil's not ready yet, so I opted for this. It's usually pretty inexpensive and it lasts a while. After we get the chicken, chicken of the woods coated in pesto, we will go ahead and add some mozzarella cheese. This is just like craft mozzarella cheese. Fresh would probably be better. This is what I had around. Just enough to kind of be what you would expect on like a sandwich here. We don't want to overdo it. We don't want to underdo it. So. 
We're gonna be making a chicken of the woods pesto sandwich on homemade Italian bread. We're gonna slice open our sub, sub style bread and we will scoop our filling inside of there. Bread turned out really nice. This is actually some of the better bread I've made. So we'll load up our sandwich here with as much filling as you would desire. And at the end, we will add just a little bit of spinach. And it's ready to serve. I just did it with a pickle and some garlic pretzel knots. Uh, it turned out really good. This was a big hit with my family probably one of my favorite ways, if not my favorite way, I've made chicken of the woods. Would definitely do this again. Absolutely delicious.